One of the biggest challenges of being a professional musician has to be traveling with your rig and being able to do it in a compact and also inexpensive way as possible. And today I'm gonna to be working with my friend Eric Krasno and helping him consolidate his rig so that he's not only able to tour with it efficiently and effectively, but also get it into a case that will allow him to carry it onto an airplane if he needs to do that, or to use under a tour bus in whatever the situation may be, he's gonna be able to have a rig that can adapt and travel and really be able to do so in a way that's most efficient. The build platform today that we're gonna be using for the entire rig is our 20 by 11 size pedal board. We're gonna be using also a power module on the side of the pedal board. And we're gonna be doing some things today, actually breaking the rule of the Holy Trinity of Tone, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. Now, if you're wondering as we go through the rig build about any of the materials that we're using or how to actually build this yourself, we have plenty of tutorials that are gonna be listed in the description, as well as pre-made versions of the very same things that we're gonna be using, whether that's zip ties, Velcro, the power cables, the patch cables, et cetera. That's all gonna be listed in the description, both in versions that we have pre-made and on how to do it yourself and all the materials and a tutorial on how to do that. Now, of course, as always, as part of the Holy Trinity of Tone, we're using a high quality isolated power supply with the MXR ISO brick, which is a really nice compact switch mode power supply. And we've done some creative things that I'll talk about in a moment about how to make that fit underneath the pedal board as streamlined as possible. And we're always observing the soldered cables thing. We're using Mogami cables and square plug connectors throughout the entire rig. But the thing that's a little bit different is Eric is utilizing a lot of fuzzes on this rig. In fact, he's got an octave fuzz and then a standard fuzz both of which are impedance sensitive, so we're not gonna be putting a buffer at the start and finish of the pedal board like we would normally do. And in fact, because we were so jam-packed on time, I actually used a Sur buffer, which is one of the buffers that's pre-made that I recommend, which allows him to run into two different amplifiers at once if he wants that, to have a split mono system, has a polarity switch so that he can adjust the polarity on that buffer, and we're just using that single buffer at the end of the signal path, and then just running through everything in series with no buffer on the input. We're relying on pedals being on, to be that buffer to carry the signal through. And remember, any pedal that's turned on is a buffer, whether it's true bypass or not. And if you're wondering about pedals that have high quality built-in buffers or already have low impedance and can be used as an input buffer or a substitute output buffer, we have a video on that that you can check up above. One other thing that's really unusual about this board in using the MXR ISO brick, it's got a separate wall worth, which is basically bringing in the power into the power supply. Now, ordinarily, when we think about switch mode power supplies, the AC mains are built into the actual power supply. So the AC is coming in, and then it's accepting the AC at the actual power supply itself. But on the style of power supply that the Dunlop is, it has a separate wall wart where that's plugging into the wall, and then it's bringing in an 18 volt at two amp power into the back of the actual power supply supply, and then it's isolating all those outputs and sending the power to each one of the pedals. We actually had to find a place to actually fit the actual wall wart onto the pedal board, and you can see here that I actually had to turn it on its side and use a little pigtail that you would use for like a lamp cord extension cord, and then I re-terminated it with a new female end so that I could have the wall wart actually planted in a fixed position, and then I could have a smaller patch cable bring it in to our power module, which is a separate accessory that we add on that you can buy separately from any one of our Vertex pedal boards. This can fit into any size of them. They're all a universal fit. The other interesting thing about the way that we did power here is that Eric chose to use a pedal called the God Vibe, and the God Vibe has a hardwired AC cable that comes out of the back. We shortened that cord in a similar fashion to what we did for the ISO brick, and then just put a normal lamp style connector, two prong AC connector going into the power module on that, and ran it all separately from everything else, ran it across the back line of the entire pedal board just so we can isolate it. Normally with DC power, all the stuff that's going to the pedals, it's not a problem if those are touching or near in proximity to the audio cables, but with AC, you don't want your audio cables anywhere near it. And I went to great lengths to make sure that we separated that AC so that we didn't have any interference or any added noise, and it definitely came out great and is perfectly silent doing it in this fashion. 
So I'm gonna bring back in Eric now, and he's gonna go through the entire signal path. We're gonna elaborate more on some of the things that we did, some of the choices behind the order, and how it actually sounds in the context of how he's gonna be using it in his upcoming tour, and how he's gonna be using it, whether that's for, again, his solo music, or if he's doing sessions, and how he combines the different effects to kind of get his signature sound out of this rig. Let's bring in Eric and do the big reveal, see what he thinks of this new rig. All right. All right, here we are. Here it is, I'm gonna let you do the honors. Wow, okay, I'm excited. All right. Wow. You gotta check under the hood, make sure that the, the engine block's clean. So clean. I've never had <laughs> such a clean board in my life. Wow. That is a work of art right there. It's, uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is my, uh, you know, I did in she. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the board completed according to your requested signal path. And you know, the cool thing about this too, which you know is part of the impetus of this whole entire build was this also fits in a case that can be carried on. Yeah. You know, you amazing. can put your crybaby and you know your your uh, just right on expression, top. Yeah. throw your cables in here and everything can be carried on the airplane. So it's like no, you know, checking fees or over it's or yeah, anything. and it's light in that little I have a I fit it we'll in show, that little, we'll show a little in the case. Yeah. Yeah. Photo, yeah. Yeah. So um um, I mean, I never in a million years thought I could have this many options in such a small yeah. package. So and credit goes to the the Vertex pedal board on this one as yeah. the you know the, the the player of the game, the Michelob, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 the, the Michelob Ultra uh, player of the game because we're having the two tiers allowing us to build up. We can stash all that stuff underneath, yeah, like the power so supply, yeah. the buffer, have that power module. And so ordinarily, if we were to have all this stuff plus those other power supplies on a board that was all on one yeah, level, much, we'd have to yeah. make it a lot deeper in order to, to do that. So this really, I think, contributes to being able to make that just more yeah. friendly for travel purposes and be able to kind of maximize the space per square inch. I mean, I didn't have to make any sacrifices. In fact, I added, as we you right. know, as we talked about it, I, I added, you know, the spring reverb which yeah. I wanted to have but you know a lot of times I have reverb on the amp and I can use reverb from here but it's just really nice to have that yeah so and then having these on the side it's yeah it's a perfect rig yeah so let's enough of me talking about it I want to hear kind of how you're using it the context of it and maybe we can just kind of go through each of the pedals or the combinations that you would use and kind yeah. of get a sense of how this would actually be used on your upcoming tour cool let's do it so now we're gonna do some playing. You're gonna take us through some of the tones, just quick signal path overviews. We got yep. the PRS Silver Sky. Yep. And then for the amplifier, we have a Hot Rod Deluxe 112. So nothing fancy as far as the amp is concerned. We're making the pedals do the work. Of course, we got a great guitar in the PRS Silver Sky, but yep. kind of that S style. And also, before we get started, let's go to stuff that's always going to be on, so that that's just going to be part of everything that we layer on. Yep. And for that, we got uh, yeah, the True Spring Reverb. Uh, you know, I'm a big reverb guy. Kind of always have some reverb on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll I'll layer it with a reverb from the Eventide, but right. yeah, that'll just be on. And this is a great digital spring reverb and you know, probably the arguably the closest that you can get to what's in a typical fender of it. Exactly. Out there. So yeah, we yeah, got that on it. all the time. But yep. first thing in the signal path, guitar plugs into what? I'm going straight into the Crybaby Junior okay. right off the bat. And what would be kind of like that application when that's being used? You kind of told me earlier that for sessions and stuff like that, they may not be something that you bring, but yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I, I love the wah stuff. I kind of have like certain songs where I where I use the wah. Uh -huh. Sometimes like for rhythm stuff, I would just use it by itself. So like, uh -huh. you know. You know, um, and that and then but a lot of times I'll combine it with an overdrive. Yeah. For soloing. Uh -huh. um, would that be like the King of Tone? King of the... Tone, I guess probably something like this. And then sometimes with the fuzz. You know, I, I, more so with the overdrive, but 
because with the fuzz, you don't hear as much of the wah. Right, yeah, the impedance stuff makes it sort of a weird uh, combination. So you're like, you have this really limited range now where it's exactly. workable. Yeah. So more so with the overdrive or maybe the boost side of the King of Tone. Yeah, I get you. Okay, so after Cry Baby, then it goes into Tuner. Not really anything to demonstrate there yeah, other yeah. than it, it tunes great, the classic polytune. Yep. And then what's next? Yeah, so then I've got the Analog Man envelope filter. Um, and especially when I'm doing, I play with Phil and Friends yep. and uh, um, a few, you know, some of the Grateful Dead guys. Yep. So I'm, I've always loved the envelope filter, but I kind of had to have one right. when I started doing that stuff. And I just love this pedal. Like the, the dynamics are awesome. Um, And then um, sometimes I'll add uh, more so probably the boost to that. Uh -huh. So this is what that would sound like. But yeah, killer pedal. And you know, for that, like I said, it's like all about the dynamics. Yeah, um, yeah and having it up close is so key. I, I know that some guys do use them further down the chain, and and there's you know there's there's a reason to do that. Just as some guys use waz further down the chain, but right, right. if you're picking dynamics, you really want those to trigger the envelope. The closer exactly. it is, exactly. And then also, you know, if you back the volume off, you can get different different kind of vibes out of it. You know. You know, so yeah, you can get all different things out of it, but yeah, I always like it kind of, the basically yeah. I like to hit that close to the beginning. Yeah, and I find that most guys, I mean, you know, you could see the John Mayer route is a little later, but when yeah. I, you look at like, you know, some of the funk guys that, you know, are, are on all the records we love, like a Paul Jackson Jr., yeah. he's right up front, like yeah. early in the chain yep. guy. And then after that, what do we got? After that, I think it's called the Octavio. Octavio. Right? Yeah. Yes, and that's uh, cool. They just, uh, I just got that pedal kind of recently. Can't beat the um, size. Yeah, tiny. And Tone I just per love square inch, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, lo I love... Love it, love it. It's just. Um, Do you use the octave setting much on that, or is it sort yeah, of. Yeah, I kind of go back and forth. So that's with the octave setting, what we just heard, okay. actually. So and this would be without. It's cool. It's like not so over the top is what I kind of like yeah. what I like about it. And again, it's like the dynamic, you know, when you kind of pull the volume back. It's, it's nice to kind of again I like having it towards the towards the beginning. Yeah, the dynamics. And also from an impedance standpoint, you know, you you want to you don't want any low impedance in. You want as close to the guitar pickup seeing it. But the next pedal, something that actually really impressed me. I always yeah. thought of the super badass as a distortion pedal, but I yeah. didn't realize that there was a fuzz version of it. Yeah, that thing is a super cool pedal. I love that pedal. Um, I was just talking to Brian Kehoe, which I think he was like kind of the guy behind right. it. Right. Um, how much I use it, like just uh, on my new record, I used it all the time. Yeah. Um, Which has got amazing guitar tones and singing, but. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, and so I, anyway, I had to have that in the board. It's funny, because I kind of, I think I lost it somewhere on my last tour, and I emailed them a couple weeks ago, like, oh, I gotta have one for my tour. I yeah, used yeah. it on everything. So um, I'm excited to have it back in, in, my, in my board. Yeah, show me how you use it. I was like sagging it really low. Yeah, but... I love that. So the, it has this variac function where you can go between five and 15 volts. Um, and I, you know, I kind of mess around all over the place on it, but right now it's closer to the five volt yeah, that's side. Here. So. I mean, I'll, 
I'll, I'll pair that with uh, the God vibe a lot. Oops. Big old creamy Hendrix. Guy. Oh yeah, yeah, it sounds insanely good. <laughs> it yeah, sounds really good. That. I'm, I, that was like definitely the the standout for me. Not that any, none of these are great. I just th I never had messed with it before. I didn't yeah. even really know that there was a fuzz version. Yeah, super impressed with that pedal. Yeah, and then we got the King of Tone, of course, the classic. Yeah, you know? classic. Uh, Mike uh, Piera is the man. He obviously he makes the the filter. The yeah. filter, but this was the first pedal I was introduced. Um, to buy Analog Man. It's just, this is the pedal I kind of bring with me no matter what. Right. If like, I'm sitting in with somebody and I can't bring a board, right. I bring that pedal. Right. It's just so functional. Um, also, like when you have, when you end up with a backline amp where you don't really know right. what, you're, <laughs> what you're getting. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just a really great overdrive channel. Um, just volume, drive, and tone. <laughs> I kind of usually keep the volume and the drive about where it is right now, which is, I guess, at like, what is that, two o'clock? Yeah. Or, yep. um, but then the tone I'll change depending on the amp, depending on the room, even. Right. Um, so I'll kind of dial in the tone based on what I'm doing or where I am. Um, but yeah, I can always kind of count on that 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 mm -hmm. sound. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, you just got the boost side. And then sometimes I'll pair them together. You know, it's kind of like when the solo is building up to the peak and I got to turn everything on. Right. And then you got the God vibe. Yep, and then we got the God vibe, which I played a little bit before. Yeah. I'll usually pair that with either the overdrive or the, um, the fuzz. Or the fuzz, but just to hear it by itself. You can set two speeds. Right. And then this kind of toggles between them. Toggles between them, yeah. And the, one of them's controlled by this knob here. Mm. Actually, I guess this one is this, yeah. And then you can kind of, this is that's power on. And then this goes between, so you can kind of toggle between slow and fast. I generally keep the volume all the way up. Right. And then the intensity on it right about there. And here's with the fuzz. I love that because some of those really long notes, it just gets this cool right. vibe. Yeah, love that pedal. And for the size too, you know, like you, a lot of the Univibe replicas are quite large, right, you know. Right. Certainly the original unit's quite large, so this Huge, is this yeah. is maybe a quarter of the size of that. Um, so yeah, definitely sounding great. And I then, also like with this one that you can switch between speeds. Right, you have two presets you can go between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's really cool. What's, uh, and then next is, uh, is it phase? Yeah, Phaser? phase 95. Again, love using this. I'll use it clean a lot for like. that sound but then I'll use it for lead a lot again um, like we'll, we'll start with overdrive um, and then also a lot a lot do the fuzz with the phase Then some. Then sometimes with the octave and the fuzz and that. Mm -hmm. 
So that, that's, that's a fun that's a, that's a fun sound. Yeah. yeah. Again, like kind of when the band's peaking. I right. Just like, right. Right. Everything turn on. It on yeah. Turn it all on. Why not? <laughs> and then and then we got the multi effect does it all in one connected to the yeah. Morning Star, the H nine. Yeah, the H nine. It's a game changer to me. Um, the the delay on it. Especially uh, as I kind of dialed in, this is a vintage delay. I mean, I, I, some, I would use the pedal just for this sound. Right. Um, I love that, A, you know, I can use the expression pedal to change feedback, but you can really get inside the app and, you know, I'll have the mix moving from like, let's, from like here to here and the feedback going here to there. So it's like freaking out and you get, you can move, move all these different parameters, different increments. Yeah. All the way back, it's kind of more of a slap back, like, you know, kind of mellow vibe. <laughs> That's really cool. So you're Seems basically like no. using the expression pedal to like, you know, either sustain notes, have them repeat further almost infinitely. Yeah. And then you can just get right back to that slap back sound when you're in the heel exactly, position. Exactly, exactly. I love that. I love having that, especially, you know, Again, um, in with when I do the Grateful Dead stuff and Phil Lesh and Friends, like there's a lot of long improv sections yeah, yeah. where people love that psychedelic thing. Right. So I, I, yeah. I, and in, with my band, we go there too. Yeah. But uh, so it's fun to have that extra kind of layer of, right. of psychedelia. Right. And so the vintage delay is one setting. What are the other um, kind of key? settings yeah. that you use. So the other main ones that I have on here um, are the Leslie, love the Leslie sound, um, and I'll use the expression to go heel is slow, um, toe is fast. So like here's a... I'll, I'll do it without the drive. Yeah, so the third sound that I uh, have set here on the Morning Star is just like a big reverb that I can kind of control how big it is. Yeah. It sounds incredible. Lo I, I really dig that pedal. Such a functional pedal. And yeah. then following that, you got America's favorite tremolo. Yeah. Analog tremolo. It's like the last last of the analog tremolos even out there anymore. You know, I've just had that pedal on my board ever since I've had, had a pedal board. Yeah. And every, I've tried all sorts of different ones. Yeah. I always go back to it. It's just the I'm, old, I'm with you. age old. And sometimes I'll, I'll do like more of the. Yeah. We need more people to evangelize the TR2. I, I I've it. been trying to make a case for them to do the Wazacraft version of this. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. where they do a lot of improvements, like, you know, Robert Keeley and Analog Man have done mods to them to yep. sort of yep. clean them up a little bit, add a volume control. It seems like it was it's such a ripe pedal for a Wazacraft reissue. Totally. Yeah, yeah and I'm thinking at some point I may do the Analog Man mod, yeah. but I, I, I just love it. I put, again, I use it with every every board every version of the board that I've had I've had for the last like 20 years has had that right. that, that yeah. on it. And and I think I even stock it's great as long as the depth isn't up too high and yeah. then you lose like a little bit of output. Right. So is that what the mod does? Yeah, it gives you that, that compensation and you have like a knob to control how much output you want relative Got to it. the depth. Got it. And then the last thing is the true spring which we've yeah. been hearing this whole time but yeah. I don't know if there's any particular magic setting that you want to show us other than I mean it's kind of, it's kind of right there. I mean like you said it's like it's just the the most true spring pedal yeah. that I've come across. Yep. Sometimes, you know, I'll I'll flip it if I'm if I'm using um, the verb from a from an amp, I'll turn I'll I'll 
put the mix higher and you use the long setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you just have something super dissimilar from what the amp can produce. Right, and then I'll just turn it on when I want. Which is, which is a fun sound too. But yeah, that's about it. So we've gone through the whole rig. Eric, it sounded amazing. Thanks, and if man. people want to check out what you're up to, you got a new album. Brand you new got album, yeah. a tour. Tell the people where they. Yeah. Find so uh, the album just came out February fourth. It's called Always. You can find me wherever you listen to music. Eric Krasno, E R I C K R A S N O. Um, and yeah, we're on tour right now. Uh, my band is called Eric Krasno and the Assembly. We've got uh, a bill with a, an amazing artist named Sun Little. We're touring the whole country, so just go to ericrasno.com. We have all the tour dates there. You can find all the music there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be out there on the road pretty much throughout the year supporting the record. We'll have all the links in the description if you're interested in learning more about Eric's music, where to find him if you wanna come see him. Absolutely incredible album, super blown away. I was listening to it on my way down here. Right on, thanks, um, and it's just really, really great. And if you want to check out more around the materials that were used to build the board, the pedal board itself, zip ties, tie down mounts, cables, all that stuff is available in the description. We also have linked our DIY tutorials. If you don't want to buy the stuff from us and you want to do it yourself, we give you all the instruction that you'll need. It's the most democratic that we can make it. So you can either buy it from us or if you want to save the money, do it yourself. You have all the resources, you know where to get the stuff, you know how to do it. That's all available in the description below. And if you enjoyed watching today, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, leave us a comment of one of your favorite licks that you saw Eric playing today, your favorite part of the video. We'd love to hear from you. If you would comment, we would love it. Thank you so much for watching. Eric, can you play us out? Absolutely. Yeah.